Vitamin C superdosing is fairly popular online. One of the main arguments in favor of high-dose supplements is that humans have lost the gene to synthesize vitamin C naturally, and animals that still have this gene often make tens of thousands of milligrams per day, which is way more than the current RDI. So is this true, and is it really an argument for superdosing? Let's see. I have a lot of videos on vitamin C on my channel, and in some of them I talk about the potential side effects of superdosing vitamin C. Often in the comments, some people will respond that animals that make their own vitamin C in their body make very large amounts of it. For example, goats are known to manufacture approximately 13,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day when they're healthy and can increase their production to 100,000 milligrams daily when faced with illness, trauma, or stress. So the argument is that we should do the same and increase our vitamin C intake by a lot. Now, I'm not against eating quality vegetables and some fruit, but to reach these types of dosages, you definitely need to supplement. For example, 13,000 milligrams would equal 13 high-dose 1,000 milligram tablets per day, and to reach 100,000 milligrams, you would probably need IV vitamin C. So this is in the range of mega dosing. It's not even super dosing anymore. Like I said before, I'm not a fan of these super high doses. And I explain why in a different video. What you need to understand is that even though vitamin C is water soluble, so you do pee out the excess, it doesn't accumulate in your fat tissue, the vitamin C molecule still interacts with other nutrients in the tissue in your body. It whips your adrenal glands, it spikes sodium, and it can potentially deplete copper. Now, I'm not saying high doses of vitamin C are always bad. For acute infections and together with the necessary cofactors, this can make sense. But over a very long time, so over months and years, it can definitely backfire. But back to the genetic argument. If other animals, most animals in fact, can make their own vitamin C, why did we lose the ability to do this? And does that mean we should ideally consume as much as they're synthesizing every day to make up for our inability? It is a strong argument, right? To answer this question, you need to understand the vitamin C gene and what it does. It's called the L-gulonolactone oxidase gene, aka the GULO gene, which encodes an enzyme of the same name. This enzyme is responsible for one of the last steps in the conversion of glucose to ascorbic acid, so vitamin C. Almost all life forms on Earth have this gene. Not just normal animals, but also sponges, fungi, and even some algae and simple marine life. It popped up in evolution billions of years ago, which means it was probably very important to life. So what happened to us humans? We do actually still have the gene, but it's non-functional. It was turned off at some point. So in our body, it's kind of a pseudo gene. Somewhere in our ancestors, this gene mutated and became inoperable, and this mutation survived. This seems kind of dumb at first. Why would we lose the activity of such an important gene? And there are several theories for why this happened. The first is the diet hypothesis. And here the inactivation of the GULO gene didn't matter because our ancestors ate sufficient vitamin C and didn't need to make it themselves anymore. The second is called the fertility hypothesis. And here it's theorized that older people needed more vitamin C and therefore died more often when it became scarce. This reduced the average age of the population towards more fertile members, and therefore enabled the population of our ancestors to regrow more rapidly when food resources were restored again. The third theory is called the electron ratio hypothesis. If you synthesize vitamin C yourself, you do not gain an electron, whereas if you consume it, you do gain electrons and spare glucose, which can then be used for more energy production. So it's really a trade-off. And the last hypothesis is called the free radical hypothesis. And this theory suggests that while the loss initially made people more susceptible to free radicals, since you have less antioxidative capacity, these more frequent DNA attacks actually led to quicker mutations, enabling our species to adapt better to our environment. To me personally, none of these theories hold up to scrutiny. And I believe one of the newer hypotheses makes way more sense. 
In the paper with the amazingly simple name, GLUT1 explains the evolutionary advantage of the loss of endogenous vitamin C synthesis. The researchers argue that all species which lost the ability to synthesize vitamin C share a second common feature. They all have a specific type of glucose transporter called GLUT1 in the membrane of the red blood cells. What they found was that GLUT1 makes the transport and storage of vitamin C in red blood cells way more efficient, and it basically recycles vitamin C after an interaction with a free radical, so when it is usually lost. This recycling is more energy efficient compared to making vitamin C from scratch, like other animals do. So while the loss of the GULO gene seems like a disadvantage at first, in an animal with strong GLUT1 expression it is actually an advantage, because it reduces your daily vitamin C requirements by up to 100 times. And the smaller requirement was very easily covered by our ancestors' diet. Besides humans, some other animals like guinea pigs and certain bat species also don't make their own vitamin C, but they all have strong GLUT1 expression. And this interaction between the GLUT1 transporter and the loss of the GULO gene answers the question if we need to mirror the diet of animals that still make their own vitamin C. We don't. The researchers write that species without vitamin C synthesis require a minimum of 2 to 3 milligrams per kilogram of body weight a day. And it was also calculated that species with a still active GULO gene require up to 200 to 300 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. Now, don't get me wrong, 2 to 3 milligrams per kilogram is still fairly low. In an 80 kilogram male, that's only 160 to 240 milligrams of vitamin C per day, which is higher than the RDI, but still fairly low if you eat a bunch of vegetables and fruit. I'm not saying this dosage is optimal for health, but what I am saying is that you cannot look at other species to determine your own vitamin C intake. The ideal dosage and tolerance is very individual, and I explain why in my video on how to take vitamin C correctly. Hopefully this helped you clear up some of the confusion around the vitamin C gene and why it doesn't mean you need to superdose. I hope you liked this video and I see you in the next one.